Franchise CP, thanks so much for joining us. Sam, anytime, man. Hope you're doing well. So, CP, obviously you're looking at free agency and just reflecting on just the journey we've been on as Knicks fans and just in general, you call it a fantastic voyage. We used to be talking about Sasha Vujicic. We used to be talking about Clay Anthony early. But being here now, when we're calling the Knicks, lots of people are calling the Knicks a contender. What does it mean to even be here with the Knicks fans and everyone calling us contenders? It's a special time. It's a special feeling because growing up as a Knicks fan in in the 90s, I remember the the great memories that that team gave me. Although they did not win, they were consistently a 50-plus win team. They were always competitive. They had an identity, and and they were there in in the end. And, you know, if it wasn't for a guy named Michael Jordan and for, you know, John Starks' choke job in Game 7, maybe they would have had a couple of rings there. But... To bring it back to circle, to, to circle back to present day, this Knicks team seems to be generating that same mojo uh, built around Jalen Brunson and his band of merry men, the, the Nova Knicks. Just trading for Mikal Bridges was a blockbuster deal for the Knicks on the heels of, of the OG Ananobi trade, which who they got in the by the trade deadline and then re signed. And so this Knicks unit, led by Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau, they seem to be putting the pieces in place to put the Knicks as a legitimate contender for the NBA. NBA finals for the NBA championship. And it's a, it's an exciting time in New York. No question. And even though free agency, obviously starting today, the Knicks making no time, wasting no time to make a splash, acquiring McCall Bridges, reuniting the Villanova boys. Now there are some people in the NBA, like a Draymond Green. He came out and, you know, criticized the trade. He said, the Knicks aren't going to be a championship contender. They're not going to win the title in the next three years. What do you make of those comments? Well, you know, people like Draymond Green, the the new media types, they like to incite the Knicks fan so that it draws more attention to themselves. Uh, But the Knicks fan is very articulate. They are a smart group of basketball fans, and they know that a lot of those guys are just factually, uh, you know, uh, straight up babbling. (laughs) That's just the bottom line. These guys uh, are not accurate when it comes to the Knicks. The Knicks are a legitimate contender. Now, it has to be played out there on the court, no question about it. But the Knicks, with their identity as being a defense, Defensive first team, rebounding, having clutch shooting from a, a, a star player like a Jalen Brunson, clutch shooting around him, shooting efficiency, Dante DiVincenzo, OG Ananobi, Mikhail Bridges, all efficient shooters. Uh, the Knicks are putting themselves in position to, to create a championship contender, and I think they can legitimately win it within the next few years. You spoke about rebounding. Of course, a player on every Knicks fan mind, Isaiah Hartenstein, a player like that, losing a player like that, how would that hurt the Knicks? And what updates have you heard up until this point when it comes to Hardenstein? Well, as of the time of, of this recording, the Oklahoma City Thunder are meeting with Isaiah Hartenstein on this first day of free agency. So they've always been a legitimate threat to land him, from my opinion. And today, based on the reports, it seems like they are pretty serious in, in bringing him to OKC to pair with Chet Holmgren and Shea Gil- Gilgis Alexander and those guys. And for the Knicks, that I think it would be a big loss because Isaiah Hartenstein brought a lot of versatility offensively to this Knicks unit. Where it, And it's not a knock on Mitchell Robinson and he just brought something a little bit different. A guy who you can run plays through. A smart, high IQ, quick decision maker. Uh, Someone who was was very efficient from the 3 to 10 range and from the 0 to 3 range around the rim. His floater improved this year. Defensively, his rebounding improved since he he came here under Tom Thibodeau. So Isaiah Hartenstein filled a big role, especially when Mitchell Robinson went down. Mitchell Robinson missed. 50 games last year due to the ankle injury. And Isaiah Hartenstein came in. And if it wasn't for his play, the Knicks may not have had the success that they did. They did have going through the playoffs. And so he would be, his loss would be pretty big by the Knicks for the Knicks. And we'll have to see, wait and see what happens on the free agency front. Now, if Hartenstein does opt to leave, he goes to OKC, let's say, and you're sitting in Leon Rose's seat. Who are you looking at? Well, unfortunately, as of the first day of free agency, a lot of the potential backup plans are coming off the board. Andre Drummond has signed with the Philadelphia 76ers. Jonas Valanciunas signed a three-year, $30 million deal with the Washington Wizards. So a lot of potential backup plans are, are falling off of the list. You still have Goga Biktaze, free agent center, who recently played for the Orlando Magic. He's 24 years old, uh, has a reputation for good defense and rebounding as well. You have Mason Plumley. He's a career journeyman, but someone who can 
get the job done, who, who can play, fill that kind of versatile role for the Knicks. He just played with the with the Los Angeles Clippers. He could be a potential option. So uh, those are two names that I would look at. You have got lesser lesser name guys like Amo Bamba, who could potentially be had there by the Knicks. So not the greatest of names. And the Knicks are going to need some reliable insurance if they do lose Isaiah Hartenstein in the event that Mitchell Robinson goes down due to injury, they really need someone who can step in and hit the ground running with this team who has championship aspirations. And there are some Knicks fans out there, obviously the Knicks signing OG Ananobi, $212.5 million. There are some Knicks fans out there that are worried about the injury prone like nature that OG Ananobi has. What do you say to those Knicks fans? Just the cost of doing business. When, when they traded for OG Ananobi, you traded away two core pieces uh, of your youngsters in RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. Once you made that trade, bringing OG Ananobi back became a necessity, regardless of how he played with the team. Now, you, you saw what he did 20 and three was his record with these New York Knicks, an 87% winning percentage. He He's a game changer for the Knicks on both ends of the floor, defensively versatile, offensively showed a lot more. I was was very impressed with his offense not just his shooting efficiency which he was known for but he did show a little bit more in the intermediate range as a shot creator and so that was just the cost of doing business yes he is an injury prone player and you hope that he can stay healthy because now this Knicks team is coming with expectations not just championship expectations but when you sign on the dotted line for these big big contracts that is when the Knicks fan starts to hold you up in a much higher regard after they see how you played here they want to make sure that they want to see that OG Ananobi is out there on a nightly basis and so there's going to be big shoes to fill for him. Injuries obviously hurt the Knicks, the Knicks this past postseason. OG Ananobi not on the court. Now they bring in Mikal Bridges. The question I have for you CP, you now have Mikal Bridges, you now have you now have OG Ananobi, you have that wing depth. How does that going to impact Julius Randle and his role with the team moving forward? Best team that Julius Randle has ever played on, and guys, guys who can he who can play off of him. And Julius Randle, one of the most double team players in the NBA, especially since he got to the Knicks and improved his game. Now he's gonna now you're gonna be able to put at least three shooters around him: Jalen Brunson, Mikal Bridges, OG Ananobi. Maybe it's Dante DiVincenzo, Miles McBride off the bench. So for Julius Randle, it just he just can, has to continue to make those quick decisions, make good decisions when he plays into those double teams, and to immediately make his team better now there may be times where he doesn't get the ball as much especially when you bring in a Macau Bridges who can do more for himself so the, the question is will Julius Randle be able to play efficiently off of those guys and that is what I'm going to be looking forward to seeing as this team gets together for training camp and beyond and what do you think of that newest point guard that makes a draft to Tyler Kolick obviously that point guard depth behind Jalen Brunson is a question for some Knicks fans. What do you think Tyler Kolick brings to the Knicks? And do you think the Knicks need to make perhaps another move to bring in another backup point guard to support Jalen Brunson? 15 points, 7.7 assists. Led the Big East last year in assists. A former Big East player of the year. Tyler Kolick really fits the profile that I was hoping the Knicks would draft. And someone who's a senior, an upperclassman, very mature, plug and play ready. Not necessarily a prospect who they're going to have to go in and, and hold their hand. But someone who can really hit the ground running. And I think that's who they got in Tyler Kolick. A, a pick and roll maestro. Someone who plays with a chip on his shoulder. If you go back and listen to some of the interviews that, that he's done done he he's really a guy who feels like he's been overlooked a la Jalen Brunson and so to see him go up against Jalen Brunson in practice that's going to be an iron sharp and irons uh type of deal and I think that's really going to benefit him now the question is is Tom Thibodeau, Thibodeau going to rely on him to be the sole backup point guard option for the New York Knicks Tom Thibodeau likes his veterans and we'll have to see how much money the Knicks have left after the McCall Bridges trade is finalized to ultimately determine who can, they can afford to bring in if they do want to go out there and, and get a potential backup point guard option. Now, that's another area where the options are kind of dwindling here. Is it a Kyle Lowry, a Cameron Payne? To, can they afford a guy like Amante Morris, who I really like? It's going to be left to be seen because the McCall Bridges trade has not been finalized, so it's not clear how much money the Knicks have to work with. The circling back to that McCall Bridges trade, too. Obviously, they trade four unprotected first-round draft picks I believe it's five or six draft picks in general in total. CP, I know you say that you, you know sometimes you got to pay the play. What would you say to that Knicks fan that says, you know what, 
the Knicks definitely overpaid for that guy. Same situation. The time is now. Jalen Brunson has turned up this team's window in terms of contending. We didn't see this. We didn't see this superstar player who arrived here with the Knicks on, on today being his two year anniversary to, to the day that from the day that he signed. But he's turning into an NBA superstar. You have you already have an all NBA all star in Julius Randle. The identity has been set. Josh Hart's acquisition, Dante DiVincenzo, this OG Ananobi, like this team is ready to compete. So when you get to that point, you have to take risks. And this Macau Bridges trade, no one saw coming, not even the Knicks, according to reports, had f- had a strong feeling that they could get him. But with the new uh, NBA CBA essentially controlling how the Knicks were going to assemble his team, their window for upgrading the team was getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So they had to go out there and make a move. It just so happens that they are at a point where this move, I believe, can help them legitimately win a championship. And so when you're faced with that, you have to put the pieces in the middle. They did so for a 3 and D, a, an excellent two-way player who's in his prime and durable, but Cal Bridges, 434 consecutive games. That is a great investment to make and a gamble that I would take nine times out of 10. Looking ahead to a free agency, Paul George recently, reportedly he is not going back to the Clippers. So Paul George has been linked to the Philadelphia 76ers. Obviously, Knicks fans know Philadelphia pretty well. If Paul George does go to Philadelphia, how does the dynamics change and what matchup in terms of, I guess, what 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 do you think the 76ers would team would look like against the Knicks? Daryl Morey and the Philadelphia 76ers are retooling. They they know that the time is now for them uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, they have the salary cap to upgrade that team. They lost to the Knicks in the playoffs, where it was it was obvious that they needed a, a consistent third scorer next to Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. And with Joel Embiid and his injury history, their championship window could potentially be closing. So they had to go out there and and uh, and take a risk. And I, in all accounts are leading to Paul George signing with the Philadelphia 76ers as he's closed the door on the Los Angeles Clippers. And so they're going to be tough. They also just got Eric Gordon. They signed uh, Andre Drummond for some more veteran depth and leadership. And he's going to add an efficient uh, uh, score that can play off of Joel Embiid when he commands his double teams. He can play off of Tyrese Maxey, who, who is a downhill blur with the speed. And so they're going to be tough. We'll have to wait and see how they round out the rest of their roster after paying George, and they're going to pay Maxey as well. But Philadelphia is going to be right up there with the, with the Knicks and the Celtics as a team to be reckoned with in the Eastern Conference. Last question for you, CP. Brunson and Halliburton recently in WWE in your opinion, who's the bigger villain? Is it Halliburton or is it Trey Young? Oh, the Trey Young thing's over with, man. It's definitely Halliburton. They have the better team. Uh, the Pacers are going to be a team that you're going to need to respect, especially when bringing back uh, Pascal Siakam. And he's wearing that jersey of a former villain in Reggie Miller, who who played that role very well. So, you know, the Trey Young thing, I think people were, were trying to, to hold on to it, but that ship has sailed. It's all Halliburton. It is the Indiana Pacers, and the Knicks owe them revenge. Hopefully they get a rematch next year in the playoffs. Uh, hopefully the Knicks make it healthy. It is all Halliburton. You heard it there, folks. CP, the franchise host and CEO of Knicks Fan TV. CP, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, man. Anytime, Sam.